Okay, people, it's, uh, it's time for the next uh, spoken program. And we have a special guest here tonight, uh, uh, today. It's not yet night. But now, as the theme for the Zoo Party has been games, two other guests before have been uh, guys uh, mostly doing the game de development. But uh, I'm really honored to have a guest here tonight who we will be talking about uh, fr uh, from the counterforce side of the game industry, from the cracking scene, the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only rock star. Please join me. All good. All good. I think. All right. And you can hear us too. Okay. <laughs> That's good. awesome. You can see us too. Hey, Juho. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Yeah. And uh, uh, at first, uh, let me do some introducing. Uh, of course, many of you dudes, you know, you know the guy. But those uh, who don't. He's, uh, he's the man behind hundreds of cracks, mostly uh, on the Commodore 64 scene from the year 1988 to 1994. That was, that was the era. That was the and, era. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's been, he, actually he is the, definitely no doubt, the number one a cracker in Finland ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's absolutely no question about it. Uh, and the many charts tell that back in the 90s there was lots of uh, disc magazines having charts in the different categories, having demo charts, having coder charts, and of course cracker charts. No other individual from Finland has ever reached those uh, charts than Rockstar. Probably you never uh, hit the number one spot, but uh, you were in top, fifth, top five many times. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember that, that I was number one specifically. There were, there were a lot of uh, those Germans and others, so it was a certain kind of uh, voting structure. But, but I was in top five regularly, so yeah. it was fine by me. And, and, uh, no need to tell you that uh, back in those days, even reaching the top ten spot, <laughs> you just you just didn't walk and, <laughs> and and do that big. You really had to do a lot of work. Yeah, it was it was so active. It's it's difficult to even look back now because there was there were there were a lot of people doing the thing and. Uh... It, it took a bit of bit of work. <laughs> yeah, but hey, uh, before we go to the Commodore 64 times, uh, you, uh, Rockstar, uh, what are you doing these days in your real life? Yeah, in real life, uh, I'm a uh, marketing consultant doing uh, copywriting and and working with a lot of e-commerce sites, uh, anywhere from uh, you know startups to I think my biggest client is doing about 300 million a year. So it's it's fun to sort of it's we'll get to that later. But there are some similarities. You know, you you look for the tiniest thing that you can improve, and suddenly your client makes two million more a year. So that's the fun thing about it today. Okay, but hey, to the to the sound guys, uh, can we get some uh, volume to the monitors? Is it available? Thanks. If you can do that. Uh, yeah, family and yeah. life is uh, yeah, yeah, kind of normal in that sense. Yeah, it's kind of normal. I uh, have a wife and uh, two kids, um, 15 and 20. Actually, my, my son uh, is 20 and he's in the army now, so he's about the same age I was back then. So it kind of brings back things. I, I mean, I remember when I was in the army, I was still at the time, that was 91, I think, and on... on uh, Leave weekends, I was still cracking games, so... Okay. Yeah. 
kind of, uh, how, how do you see it now that, you know, <laughs> like comparing uh, uh, when you were young, yeah. and you're in the age like your father was back then, hey, time goes fast and, uh, and uh, lots of things happen in life, but hey. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and now my son is you know you know he, he comes back and he does his gaming thing with with his friends and you know it's not that different. But at the time it was just a pioneering thing that we all did with the demos and with the cracking. It was a it was an intense time, and uh, you know I guess that intensity is got kind of what kept me going for uh, as long as it did. Yeah. Does your kids know about your cracker past? Um, well, my son is pretty good at Googling stuff, so he might, but he has, he's never brought it up. I never, I never tried to explain, but, you know, there's going to be discussion at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. my, my wife knows, but she doesn't really understand it, so that's fine. Okay, okay. But, okay, like, like my, my kids, for example, they're like, hey, what is this flex thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Daddy, yeah. you just sit on the computer, you know? But, hey, I, when I tell them that, hey, your daddy is a pretty famous composer on the Commodore scene. Yeah, but, what? but like, in, like in the early <laughs> yeah. 2000s or around those times when I was getting some of my you know, better jobs at the time, I, I still heard like uh, I was in the uh, technology industry at that time and, uh, and I came in as a consultant and then I overheard some people Googling my name. Oh, what's this rock star thing? And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. this, this, this thing just doesn't go away. But it was a fun discussion yeah. sometimes. Yeah. But Daddy, you're, you're really not a rock star. <laughs> yeah. We well, wish what, you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. It's not a sponsored drink, but I like it. So. Yeah, yeah. But OK, you, you got your name on the, on the, on the energy drink. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it refers to to your. Uh, I mean, what else could it be? Yeah. Okay, but hey, let's let's get uh, to the real issue. Uh, yeah. to, to the, the to my list, what we really are talking about here tonight, about Commodore 64. It obviously has had a great impact in your life back in back in the days. Like I said, your active years were from 1988 to 94. You, yeah. were, you were pretty, uh, many people stopped in the, in, in the uh, early eight, 90s, but you kept going and going. And yeah. you, were, you were a member in, in many great groups. You started yeah. with Bite Rapers, then Context, Ecstasy, then there were uh, Dominators, Genesis, Genesis Project. Uh, yeah, Talent. <laughs> yeah, talent. Uh, lots of lots of really really yeah. famous groups and and Fairlight for I think yeah 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 two, for like two weeks or something <laughs> yeah two weeks in Fairlight one, one uh, release or yeah, two yeah. greetings to Bacchus if you're looking uh, just yeah, yeah okay but hey uh, in the first place how did you uh, get involved uh, and how did you get interested in cracking and why yeah. cracking? I know, I know you were uh, also talented in many other aspects, coding and yeah. even, even doing music, but yeah. why cracking? What was the challenge or how did you end up doing that? Well, it, it, was, uh, it was a fascinating thing just to start seeing uh, games coming in. And at the time, uh, there was a Finnish group called Stack. And I don't rem remember who the cracker was, but... Conan. Conan, yeah. right. And, uh, you know, it was, I was fascinated how, how are these guys doing this. And I, I was determined to find out what, what they're doing. And I started digging in and digging in. And I've always been in, interested in sort of like a little bit secretive information. So I just, just wanted to find out what the hell they're doing and how can I do the same. And once I figured that out, how can I do it better than anybody else and, and just go on and on. Okay, but what was the path? Uh, yeah. How did you learn it? There was no tutorial in, or internet no. how, to, how to do cracking. Today, uh, these days you have some uh, YouTube videos, yeah. people cracking tapes and stuff, but yeah, yeah. what was the learning curve for you? The learning curve was, uh, it was, it was kind of difficult. It was, it was a long, long, uh, long nights of you know, looking into other people's cracks, uh, trying to find a crumb trail of what, what did they do there and get an original and the crack and to see Okay, here's the loader part. What does the loader do? How do I stop it? How do I redirect the, the data streams? And how do I get it from tape to disk? And what do I do then? And do I have to 
like create a whole loading system from scratch. And it, it, it was just a, an ongoing process of, of you know, figuring out how it's done. And, and frankly, uh, you know, later on, I, I got to talk with a lot of famous crackers, uh, uh, such as Antitrack, of course, and uh, plenty of those guys. Uh, Dark Friend, what was the French guy again, the Transcom guy? Uh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But anyway, a lot of those guys, we, we sort of shared notes, but each of us, we realized, did it a little differently to, to learn it, but in the end, we kind of do the same thing. So what I ended up doing was, you know, there were a few games companies. There was Ocean and uh, Electric Arts and some of them, and, and, and I just ended up doing like a, like a different program, a different routine that will take apart, um, you know, that would, I would start the program and then start, let's say, the tape. And mm -hmm. then in, instead of loading the game, it would just take it bit by bit and onto the disc, and then I just put it together again. But uh, you, you really had to uh, know yeah. about uh, coding as well and, and about oh, yeah, memory yeah, yeah. addresses, lots of, lots of kind of coding, yeah. coding stuff to uh, and understand fully what, what different things are doing. Yeah, it, and it was kind of a, kind of a learn-as-you-go thing. And, and I did some, obviously I had to learn coding and I had to, um, uh, I, d I did some demos, not very, <laughs> not very great, and I did some music and stuff just to just to know the whole thing and the whole system. But um, uh, and and I ended up doing uh, some packers myself just so I know exactly what it does and and exactly what the end result is going to be. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on. But. Uh, how did you find your way to the uh, Commodore scene? Yeah. Um, How did you find the groups and uh, what was the way? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so I did a couple of, uh, couple of cracks. I, no, wait a minute. Let's take it back. Um, I did a, couple, a few cracks just, just on my own, just to learn the thing. And then I believe Mr. Grendel, who is equally active today here, <laughs> uh, I believe I contacted him and asked him, you know, you know, I'm, I, I could do this cracking thing. Do you guys need somebody? And uh, I think he sent me like a couple of games, some strategic games, and I, and I promptly cracked them and sent them back. And he said, oh, okay, fine, we'll send you more. And uh, that's that's how we started. Okay, and you, uh, you brought Bite Rapers as the first Finnish group to the cracking charts. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I I remember those times. I was there too, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, uh, but uh, soon after you, uh, you you joined my group. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. true. And, and the rest is history. Yeah. But hey, uh, uh, talking about the uh, 80s and uh, early days of the scene, uh, of course we have uh, fond memories from those days, but. Uh, did you have any idols, or, or did you get uh, uh, influenced by anyone, or, or who were your childhood heroes in um, the in the scene back in the day? I mean, there were some some names that were really kind of legendary. Some of the Fairlight Crackers, with uh, names pulled out of Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Gollum, and uh, those guys, and Mr. Z, and. Um, of course, the of course there were the uh, English guys who who were closest to the game companies, and they were getting the originals the easiest, and they were getting the early releases, and those guys were just churning out, churning out yeah. things, and I, I admired that too. But I but I was really most admiring the guys who took the time, took the effort to to really make racket into an art. Yeah, because in the early days, it was just about. Uh, Removing the copy production, uh, copy protection, and uh, yeah. just to get it released. Yeah. But then later on, the crackers they really started paying attention to what they're producing, making yeah. trainers, and uh, uh, and also competing uh, who makes the shortest version yeah. of anything. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay, but we'll come to that a little bit later. But uh, let's talk about the, the Finnish cracking scene. Of course, we are here at the Finnish. 
a copy party. We call yeah. Zoo a copy party, like in the good old days, not just a demo party. But uh, at least I hope people are copying a lot of stuff now here. Mm. But uh, um, when you when you came to the scene, you already mentioned Stack. Yeah. Yeah, which was really one of the first groups to produce cracks out uh, from Finland. Yeah. Conan, one of the early guys, actually who lived not not okay, not next door to me, but he was the big big guy in the northern part, of Finland, Oulu, yeah. where where I'm from too. And uh, to me, he was kind of you know like a god. Yeah, hey, I, and, I remember thinking the same. Yeah. Yeah, and thinking about hey, there's a god, a god <laughs> living in in this <laughs> in this address, and uh, you know. I remember also sending, I sent him some of our early products, mm. uh, but uh, they didn't uh, convince because, uh, let me let me tell you, uh, we wanted to join Stack back in the early days, oh, yeah. okay, oh, yeah. but we were not good enough back then, <laughs> but okay, yeah. uh, Conan is one of the uh, big big names in the early Finnish cracking scene, but then other guys, Casper. By Drapers, he did some cracks yeah. too. Yeah, he was, he was pretty good. Yeah. yeah, and Cosper is here too. Oh, is he? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, Cosper, uh, come to chat with us after this interview. And uh, but then I've, I've been I've been researching the early mm -hmm. Finnish uh, scene now recently. Uh, at least I I really did some research back in uh, the t Corona times. Yeah, yeah. When when I had time, they were. The earliest uh, Finnish cracks that I found was from 1984. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Those days, uh, stuff by a group called Seasoft. Seasoft, okay. yeah. I never even heard about them yeah. back in the active times. And then uh, some uh, cracks from Pure Byte. Pure Byte, Cup yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Couple of guys. And, uh, and uh, then there were some, some individuals. But of course, the the scene was a local thing in the yeah. early days. There's a guy called uh, Black Belt, I believe, that, that was in, I think he was in Bright Rapers. For Black some, Belt, some yeah, yeah, yeah. He did also a couple, couple of cracks. Yeah. And, but uh, you are the, like I mentioned earlier, you are the big name in the Finnish cracking scene. Mm. Uh, how did you sax succeed coming so big and the other guys? They just fed. What was the, your secret? Did um, you just you were in good company, or you had the motivation, or um, how how would you describe it? I guess it's the secret of your success. Of a couple of things. Well, one is was just I was just so interested in it, so intrigued. You know, how, how does this work, and how do I get better at this, and how do I, and over time it, it became like who, who does the better cracks, and who's the first, and do you get it, get them imported to the states, and and. Um, but the other thing is, was the whole group scene. Of course, there was like healthy competition and sometimes unhealthy competition, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know there were some interesting uh, dynamics. Uh, there were there were some really good guys that I would talk to even today, like Darren of, of Talent and uh, and the Danish guys uh, who were with Context and yeah. Brian and Thomas and those guys, and and then there were others who who would uh, do all kinds of unsavory things. Like, uh, you know, I, I remember one guy, I, I won't mention him, but uh, he got into the habit of calling a SWAT team into his com competition's home. Think about that. Yeah. Cops crawling in your window just because you wanted to be first. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that went over several uh, lines for me. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But hey, uh, Back in the day, when in the 80s, you were young and uh, yeah. you had uh, all the energy. All this. How, was the no how was your normal day? You went to school. What happened after that? Yeah, uh, well, after that, uh, I might have gone to um, this uh, local shop, which oddly was very well stocked in uh, Commodore 64 games. Uh, over time, maybe I even had a hand in it because I was buying a bunch of them so so they for some reason they they just had a lot of them and they were early and i think they uh had a good relationship with the uh, importer and uh so 
So I would check if there's something new. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. Maybe it was something that was somebody had just released, but I just wanted to practice anyway and and just release my own version and do it better. And uh, and often it meant uh, late nights and uh, especially with the equipment being what it was. And sometimes you had to wait for, like I told to somebody, like sometimes you just had to accept. Okay, if I'm going to get this out. I'm going to just, just wait for two hours for this thing to pack. Then I'm going to fire up my modem mm. and hope nobody picks up the phone at, the, <laughs> at our place <laughs> and just get it over. And in the morning, I'd be pretty tired but happy that I got something out. Yeah. So, yeah. I, know, I know what you're talking about, yeah. late hours, and <laughs> you just have to steal from the good night's sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If you wanted to be on the top, you really had to pay the price. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how, how it went. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but uh, did, you, did you have any other hobbies? Or did you have the time? Was it just Commodore 64 and well, cracking and uh, uh, swapping? You did swapping too. Yeah, I mean, I was a young man coming to my own, so, so of course they were there were a little bit of the usual beer and ladies and uh, whatnot, but at, at, to be uh -huh. honest, there were a couple of, maybe one year that I remember that I was just doing this all the time. And uh, it, it was just something that, uh, that was a bit of an obsession, you know, uh, no problem admitting it later on, but uh, um, I just used it all the time that I got. But yeah. But uh, at some point, I, and I remember, uh, you know, being happy that at some point you sort of pulled off and said, well, I need to leave now and do a little bit less of this stuff. And uh, um, while I uh, kept at it for a little while longer. Yeah. Yeah. I, my torch, you know, it, it was on the, on, the, on the high flame for a pretty long time, but then, you know, Enough is enough, yeah, and time for other things. But you yeah. still still kept going, all yeah, all I, the way to 1994. Yeah, doing uh, things from on and off. I mean, I was in university by that time, and I'll. Uh, there's a question later on. I'll, I'll just refer it to now. That what finally ended ended it was a friendly dis friendly discussion with a uh, phone company representative, and at the time, you know, internet was there, but it was basically just email and something that you could do use at the university. And uh, I had some friends who did interesting things with it even back then. But uh, yeah, I had a phone call uh, from a phone company guy, and they suspected it that I'd been doing blue boxing, which of course I hadn't. <coughs> and uh, so I had to come over and have a. Uh, well, I, I wrote them a letter, obviously, and. and Good thing I was a good writer even back then, so I sort of held my own, and they had really nothing concrete, and they just scared me to bits. And uh, I decided, well, okay, that's it then. Okay. Yeah. All the all the great stories come to an end in in, yeah. in, in some yeah, yeah. in some way. That was your way, okay. But maybe we'll talk about it a little bit later more. Yeah. But hey, uh, when talking about cracking, of course we need to talk about how to get those originals yeah. <laughs> because i think the uh, biggest problem in finland kind of was uh, how to get your hands to all those hot originals yeah of course they were originals but nobody wanted to crack old games you had yeah. to have the fresh fresh stuff you mr rockstar can you now tell us uh, what was your secret? I know that, but what do you want to tell to the audience? Yeah, I mean, I had the odd lucky strike with the, with the local store. I still don't know how that's even possible. There were a couple of games that came in like weeks earlier than anybody. I, I don't still don't know about that. But the majority of the games, I had a I had a friend who uh, worked at a certain place, and he he got his hands on everything. So. And we had an interesting relationship. Um, um, he hated giving me the games, and I loved cracking them. So, <laughs> so. Did, 
Yeah. There, there are stories from from the scene that you know originals. Uh, uh, how, how you just not did not use the regular post because it would have uh, taken the whole day. Then there was a guy at the train station giving the conductor, uh, hey. Oh, yeah, will yeah, you put actually, this to the next station and and my guy will get it there and uh, you know there were several, several uh, uh, ways to do it but yeah, uh, not, not was, it, was it that it, yeah, hard the, we did that a couple times sometimes he would mail them and uh, and later on when i moved to the same city we were really close by actually his working place and where i was staying was like uh, less than a kilometer so i would he would say, hey, I have something new, and I'll just walk over and get back and not sleep the next night. And yeah. uh, that's it. Yeah. But it, it was interesting to see back in the glory days, for like, like in context, that uh, you really got hot originals, even, yeah. even doing first releases, which oh, yeah. uh, uh, we're now thinking, making a first release from Finland, yeah, yeah. it sounds... Uh, Incredible when when the game has been done in England. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were like uh, there were these guys in England, Ikari and uh, Talent and those guys. They would go to a trade show and just just lift the latest stuff, <laughs> or, or they'd have a friend who'd give it to them. But uh, through some uh, some good luck, I mean, there were like I think two companies importing games, uh, 64 games into Finland, and my guy was at the other one. And uh, and for some reason, I, I guess they just figured, you know, that nobody cares in Finland, so you know we could just send them everything, and they ordered pretty much everything. And uh, sometimes we got lucky, uh, some really really big games, and uh, we did it did it fast. And we sometimes we were like, what is no, is nobody else working on this? And then we just export it to the states uh, towards the end, and uh, yeah. Yeah, but it, it is still beats me even today yeah. that from I, I, I believe there's still one game that's only been cracked by me. Uh, nobody else even did it. Uh, what's his name? And part of the reason was that it was on tape, and everybody was waiting for the disc version. And I just I just did that uh, grueling job of getting. It was a really. It it ended up like two and a half discs of material. The name comes back to me in a minute. And, and the funny thing is, when we exported it to the States, the Americans complained, you did a bad crack because it's not fitting into these sites neatly. And I tried to explain to them, over here in Europe we have these tapes and they don't fit neatly onto the discs. And they just like, ah, doesn't make sense. Mm. But that, that was the fun, fun yeah. with the Americans. Oh, yeah. But uh, of course, needless to say, uh, you owe a lot uh, about your fame to your original supplier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Things, yeah. things, uh, things uh, t took off uh, in a very different way when, when we got together. And, uh, and he, he got a kick out of it, but he also resented it a little bit that I kind of got the spotlight. And uh, we were on and off, and, and still, like, like a, a few years ago, we actually found out that we lived, well, maybe it's 10 years now, we lived uh, for about a year on the same street. We just uh, came across each other. Hey, uh, are you? Yes, you are. And we just uh, caught up, and, uh, and um, yeah, that's that. Okay. Hey, yeah, talking about the, the first release mm. days, how would you describe it? How fierce was the competition? Who, who, it, it, it seems to me that even today, <laughs> the people are still yeah. cracking, and there's fierce competition about the first release culture. Yeah. But uh, I mean, how I mean, was it? How was it? You really, uh, it, uh, you might have cracked it, but you really were in, in rush to put it out. Yeah, it's, it was a, it was a constant pressure of you know, do I spend how much time do I spend on this, and really try to compress it and do a lot of a lot of trainers and stuff, uh, as opposed to you know, do I do I hear some voices that uh, the guys in Zenith or Ikari or Genesis Project some, somewhere else they're already pushing it out there, and 
if I heard that, then I guess, you know, sometimes just aborted it and just put it out. And then somebody says, well, why did you take, do more trainers? Well, then I would have lost the release. So, so it was an interesting, you know, everybody knew the big games when they were coming out and uh, everybody knew to expect them. Everybody knew that there's going to be like at least 10 groups that had a chance to get it out the first. And, uh, uh, and uh, we, we got lucky a few times. Yeah. What was the official? How did you measure it? Who really was the first? Because when you're doing the intro text, yeah. if you voted, hey, first released by, <laughs> and, and then someone was 10 minutes before you. Yeah, or... that's right. That's, that's, that, that's the thing. I mean, you would put the dates, and of course, uh, as appropriate at the time, you, you would uh, insert a little dig into your competitors, you know, na na na, we got, the, got here first, and maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But I guess the measuring stick for a lot of people was that who gets it to the States first, and if there was a, if you had a good importing company, we like, we had Empire at, that did most of our importing to the States, and they were, they were really good guys, and, uh, and uh, th that was the sort of yardstick towards the, you know, 90s and such. But, uh, but there was a lot of just by mail swapping anyway, you know this, you, I, I put you through the, <laughs> through the pain a few times. And, uh, I know the mail the, swapping thing. There's a couple thing. more guys here who are just like, uh, don't even talk about it. Yeah. So, you know, the swapping by mail, it it's, seems incredible today when we have internet and everything else. And, but uh, that's what we did. Yeah, I remember uh, in, the, in the really hot uh, times, I remember uh, I got, uh, at the best, I got four sendings a week from this guy. <laughs> here's another crack, and next day, here's another one. And okay, I just duplicated and to the world, let's go. And, yeah. and that's, that's how they all spread. Have you, have you uh, by the way, have you heard any stories afterwards that uh, how far did your crack spread in the end? Yeah, that's difficult to tell, but I, I, I sure heard, uh, I know a number of guys who did a lot of these, you know, just, they just went with a, with a big bag onto the post office a couple times a week, and, and they spread all over, certainly Scandinavia, certainly, uh, certainly throughout Europe, um, later on the US, but... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Also, Australia. Probably. I remember yeah. sending stuff to Australia myself. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> that must have been cheap. Buccaneer, Warriors of oh, Time. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. If, you wa if you're watching, greetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and also, greetings to the Onslaught guys. If you're watching this down under, I know time might be a little bit different than here in Finland, but right. cheers to you. Hey, uh, about intros, let's talk a little bit about mm. intros. I know the intros are the core of the demo scene. Yeah. That's, that's how it all uh, developed into the demo scene. Yep. We, well, all, we all remember those uh, early day intros, dynamic duos yes, and, uh, and stuff like that. Dynamic you know, but duo and Zenith and uh, Ikari and... Yeah, a lot of those early guys. Of course, you had to put uh, the greetings to intros, and uh, mm. but of course, you made lots of cracks. You 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 didn't have the time to uh, type a lot of uh, scroll yeah. text, but of course, sending the greetings yeah. that was the most important thing, and it was just not typing the uh, group names and greetings, but you you had some order. It oh, was, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. It, because yes, yes. Uh, it, it was kind of a, a mental rankings in the, in the greetings. Yeah, that was who, who, who was fir yeah. greeted first. Yeah, there was a definite pecking order. You, you know, if, if you were in good terms with, say, Ikari, say, Empire, say, you know, some of those guys, you would put them first because then they would do the same to you. Yeah. And, uh, and that's how part of the, you know, that was part of the way that people started to recognize you as well because you get you're getting mentioned and such. But yeah, the intros were a fun part. Uh, you guys, uh, in context, did a lot of amazing intros and, and, uh, and 
you know, the first intro, of course, that I used was the Bite Rapers intro. I can still hear the tune in my head, in my yeah. ear. Uh, are you referring to later. the <laughs> notorious Casper uh, Waste? Uh, That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> what is what it was called? Which uh, the, took the a, about intro, a minute, yeah. minute to start and yeah, a yeah. minute to get out of it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> famous Pipe Rapers <laughs> Cosper intro. Yeah. 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 But you also did some intros yourself. Yeah, I did a bunch of intros and, and, and especially during the time when we all, uh, all of the top crackers tried to outdo themselves and have like a tiny, tiniest intro possible. And, yeah. and Triad was one of them who was doing it. Of course, Fairlight had their tiny intro and and others, so you had the tiniest intro and the craziest packer cruncher, you know, combination that you would really just have the smallest yeah. file in the end, which oh, which yeah. kind of means something when you start to call uh, call these boards, and it actually costs you money. Yeah. So that's part. Of, that's the other reason why we tried to yeah. crunch it down. What was your biggest phone bill? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, I think it was it was definitely four figures. There might be one month that it was five figures, but that that was before the euro. So it was about probably about a couple thousand euros. <laughs> just about, just yeah. to get your stuff out the just world. Just to get my yeah. stuff out there. I mean, there were things to get around that, but some of the things were so unsavory that I did, just didn't want to do it. And uh, and the internet was still like. I was actually, I got lucky, I had a, an actual hacker friend who sort of opened gateways through systems so I could drop things into an FTP server uh, towards the end in the 90s. We did that a couple of times, but it was still rare. Yeah. Hey, uh, I see the time flies, you know. You right. know. <laughs> yeah. But hey, let's move on. Uh, you did uh, lots of NTSC fixing. Oh, that too. Yeah. That's because there's not, not many crackers who did that, but uh, yeah. you really paid attention doing that. Yeah. Uh, you got yourself an American machine some, from somewhere. Yeah. Tell me, tell me uh, quick, quickly, yeah. what was the story? Yeah, the story was uh, I just put it out on a, on a board someplace that, you know, uh, that I was looking to speed up my process and I needed an NTSC. Uh, machine and, and just one day out of the blue uh, it comes in the mail and I and I realized okay who's who's the sender Deepak something I can't remember his handle but whoever you are you, it was wonderful and uh, suddenly I had an NTSC computer as well so every crack that I did especially the that when I tried to do a first release of course I tried to fix it myself because they took their sweet time they were lovely guys but they took their sweet time in America so I tried to do it myself so that it happens faster. It was really difficult work, I have to say, uh, you know, to get the rasters just right, to get the, the timing here and there. It was another process. I mean, learning cracking was enough, but learning that was, that was, that was tough. I yeah, mean, I, I think there were yeah. just, uh, just a couple of guys besides myself who were actually doing, doing it in Europe. And uh, I'm kind of proud that I did it, yeah. You really can call it service, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not, yeah. not just only cracking, but you really fixed the game for the American guys. Yeah, that's right. Oh, damn. Um, hey, about your tools. I know mm. you wrote some uh, cra uh, tools for cracking yourself, yeah. but uh, uh, tell me about your toolbox a little bit. Yeah, uh, I did a bunch of those uh, sort of let's say, loader-specific tools for, for cracking. But I also uh, did uh, a couple of packers myself. Uh, most famous of them was the XTC packer, when, when, when we had the uh, XTC group, uh, group called XTC, nothing to do with drugs, so calm down. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's amazing. Just a month ago, some guy in Germany contacts me out of the blue asked me some obscure question about my packer. Does it use this algorithm? Uh, how does it work and how does it stack up? And I'm like, dude, that was like a thousand I'm years ago. Sure. I have no idea. How about it? But, yeah. but you know, I'm, yeah. I'm glad I did it. I still remember you released, I think it was a game called uh, APB, All Points Bulletin. Oh yeah, uh, I remember. 
usually a game like that had some multiple files, but you yeah. put them all into one file. Yeah, but that felt like, what is this sorcery? Yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah that, that, was, but that was fun. I, yeah, I think it was you and Snacky from Genesis who, yeah. who were in the front line doing that stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not, still not quite sure who did it first, but I, but I remember developing the process myself. So, so it was a game, it had like 11 parts and I just put it all together and then the loader would just start loading so that I, I put the actual game at the end of the memory and then it would start loading the levels from the beginning. So that was a kind of an innovation we did. Okay. About uh, copy protections. Mm. Your memories about copy protections. Yeah, there were, there were some, uh, some funky guys who, who would always, like, uh, you know, the guys who actually made the games, they would uh, put, put some, uh, you know, messages, you know, screw off, uh, screw off crackers and all kinds of things. When we dig in, we would find these little notes, uh, love notes to us. And, uh, and we'd do the same, you know, when, when we released the crack, we'd, we would replace it with our own text. Hey, love, much love to you too. And uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that was a fun little back and forth. And uh, that's what we did, yeah. There was uh, several software houses that used yeah. like Ocean, uh, Epics. They used. Yeah. Did they use the same protection o over and over again? Uh, so it was a piece of cake. Oh, it's yeah, an so Epics it's, game. I yeah, know how so to do this. Some of them was a piece of cake because, like, uh, let's say the Ocean Loader was one one uh, famous one, and you could just do it over and over. They would change little tiny bits just to inconvenience guys like us and then we would just find out what's different and yeah. and you know maybe there's a different encryption or something like that and then we just crack that and carry on but then there were some others who would really <laughs> take the take the time and the effort to create uh, I remember there were a couple of games especially a disc they would do like a like a whole proprietary format for one game just to make sure that would we would it probably worked in some cases. That it took some, sometimes several weeks for, for guys like us to crack it, so they would get their sales in and it wouldn't matter. So I kind of respected that. Yeah. What was the trickiest one in your cracking career? Um, People have been talking about paperback writer. Yeah, paperback writer was, was one that, yeah, Antitrack kept, kept uh, sending that to all the crackers, you know, just to test them, you know. That, that was one of the, one of the trickier ones. Um, and some of the tape loaders uh, were quite creative. Um, they messed with with the timings, and they would have things in the in the loader while while you're loading the game. You would have different things that would throw off the actual loading timing. And if you took off the loader itself, then it would mess up the data. So you would have to do all kinds of things. And uh, you know, there were some guys who didn't want to use the time, and they would just yeah. Maybe, maybe the best guys doing uh, copy protections were crackers themselves. I, I, think, it's, I think it's possible. I think yeah. it's possible, yeah. yeah. Okay, but hey, uh, time runs out. We have a couple of, uh, five minutes, I say. But uh, copy parties. Oh, yeah. Fast rewind from the Rockstar's memory. Yes, yes. Uh, the first one, of course, was the uh, legendary one. Uh, White Draper's party where we met, met yeah. the first time. That yeah. was 87, 88. 88. 88. 88, yeah. And that was a really fun time. A lot of, some of you guys were there. And uh, that was the beginning of it. There were a bunch of parties in Sweden uh, hosted by Horizon, Fair, Fairlight, uh, a lot of those guys. In Denmark, a couple of parties. Uh, the Ikari one, which uh, <laughs> has uh, ended kind of scandalously with, with those guys. Uh, cheating on their own demo competition, <laughs> and, and it's, still, it's still a fun thing to remember. And, uh, and another, another party, I can't quite remember. I, I wish my, our um, context uh, Danish members were here, but uh, maybe you're watching. Yeah. And um, it was mostly Finland, Scandinavia, a couple of, I think I went to like a couple of parties in Germany. But, but the word was always that in Germany and in Holland, uh, there were 
authorities monitoring, so it wasn't an attractive thing to go there because yeah. there were there were actually guys, you know, th there were police cracking in and taking your computers, and I didn't want to risk that. So okay, but you went to many parties yourself anyway. Yeah. Good memories, of course, from those. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fun yeah, time, and, and uh, I'm still in and touch with a, with a few of those guys. Yeah. yeah. And, well, this is where we have come to <laughs> yeah, yeah. having having parties these yeah, it's, days. Yeah, it's awesome really fun. To have it's still you. going. Uh, how have your uh, scene life or your history in the scene affected what you are today and what you do today? Is there uh, is there anything? Yeah, I was thinking about that on on a, on a drive here, and uh, and definitely, uh, you know, I'm kind of a um, kind of a loose gun <laughs> professionally as well. I'm, I'm doing consulting in, in different different ways and, and there's a sort of a global community of marketers and copywriters who kind of stick together and there's a similarity to the scene back then. We come together at seminars at sometimes, we have our own own lingo, we have our own stars and uh, there's, a, there's a similarity there. And also, uh, you know, writing all those um, all those intro texts and everything else, you, you know, uh, writing is a big part of what I do today and for, for sales and otherwise, but uh, I can see certain similarities. Sure. Okay. Do you feel you have you got any benefits from doing Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, uh, while I risk my health uh, staying up a lot of nights, uh, I think I got a lot of, lot of good friends and it, it taught me to be really sort of tenacious in getting things done. Yeah. And uh, that's something that I carry with, my, uh, with me still to today. So, okay. Yeah. One last question. Did you ever have anything, any trouble with the authorities, the police, <laughs> and stuff like that? Because cracking was illegal in any way back in the days. Yeah. Um, the short answer is no. Uh, I was lucky in that sense. A lot of the guys in in, in uh, Central Europe had some troubles, and I made sure that you know while it was in the gray area, I never did uh, anything like outrageously outrageously bad. There were some guys who got caught and uh, doing some unsavory things with credit cards and stuff, and I didn't want to go there. But uh, I, I was fortunate, you know. I, I had a couple of scares and. That was it. And I was actually one time I was, I had a call from the authorities, but that was a case of mistaken identity for somebody who was doing way worse things. And uh, so luckily uh, I got off scot free. Okay. So all good. All good. Yeah. Okay. Hey, our time is running out. The Zoo Kids competition is about to start real soon. So it's time to thank our guest, Rockstar. Thank you for coming. Thank you very it's much. It's really heartwarming. My, my pleasure. And thanks, and thanks for sharing, sharing the stories with us. My pleasure. And if you, if you guys have anything to ask, you want to know, Rockstar will be here at least for a second after this. Yeah. Come, <laughs> come and ask. ask. But uh, yeah. we will do it. Uh, Hello, we will do it personally. The question? Oh, okay. Fast question. Yeah, would he still be able to crack a 64 game? <laughs> Good well, question. Well, but now, quick well, well, answer. Probably not. <laughs> you know, uh, pretty much no way in hell. I mean, I, I don't even know what kind of protections there are to, today, and I haven't touched a 64 in years. But you know, given a weekend and a computer and some time and some rockstar drinks, <laughs> maybe. Might but be possible. Okay, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Kiitos. Kyllähän mä muistan. Koko yhdestä häkkäröistä yhdessä. Sellainen, että olipa varsin viheliäinen. Tota noin, niin varsin viheliäinen oli se, että peli häkkäröistä. Koko yhdestä kiinni.